Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to the Ramble. Manchester United fans, I come in peace, okay? I, if you don't know, I am a Liverpool fan. You can tell from the Scouse accent. I always make that joke just for the trolls. Um, but I want to talk today about Manchester United. And I'm going to take off my Liverpool hat, metaphorically. I'm not wearing a Liverpool hat. And talk about Manchester United. Because it's, it's a really weird case of... I feel like a team that had to appoint Ole Gunnar Solskjaer but shouldn't have appointed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And I'm not saying he's the one to blame for the current bad form, but we'll get to that. So, as you may know, you've most of you have probably heard of Man United. In the last sort of 25 years, they've been one of the best footballing teams in the world and Alex Ferguson, one of the best managers in the world. And after any manager like Alex Ferguson leaves, it's really hard to continue and they obviously it was at that point where they probably needed to rebuild a bit the chosen one Gollum himself um David Moyes came in didn't work out and they've had a succession of managers that didn't work out and obviously ended with Jose Mourinho um getting sat by the club and they appointed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as manager as on a temporary basis and I was okay I thought okay that's that's quite a good idea I think um you know, as much as Man United and Liverpool like to hate each other, we're very similar in a lot of ways. And the idea of a Man United legend managing the club is is perfect for a Man United fan, just as if Kenny Daglish is manager of Liverpool or Steven Gerrard one day. Um, and I think it was a great appointment as a caretaker manager. And then he went on that fantastic run. And after that run, that three months, was it 10 wins and 11 or something ridiculous after the shit that we'd seen with Mourinho? Loki, get down, please. Thank you. Rude. Um, you could... The board had to appoint Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on a permanent basis. There was no sort of... it would have There would have been uproar. It's like, hang on, you've got this guy in and he's won 10 out of 11. Sorry if my numbers are wrong. Um, and then... You go, okay, no, we want this big name manager to come in now. You'd like it makes no sense to do that. And so they had to appoint him, but I don't think it's the right appointment. And this is not so much anything to do with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being a bad manager. Maybe he will be one day, but he's so untested. He's managed, I think, one club, is it one club? But anyway, his big club was mould. And he won, was it a couple of league titles there? Um, and a cup or whatever. But he took over and it was great because if it, and it didn't, I don't, uh, let me know, Man United fans partic particularly, but guys, let me know what you think. It didn't feel like he came in and was like tactical revolution of the club. It more felt like he let the players off the leash and just go, go for it, like play. Pogba, you're really good at football. Start being that good at football, that sort of thing. And just let the players play. They weren't confined by this sort of Mourinho tactic. And that's what helped them get to, on that good run of form and stuff. And now the sort of, that can only carry you so far, that sort of, yeah, just go for it, lads. We're better than them. And I feel like now the, we had a couple of iffy results. Now you have to sort some shit out tactically and stuff. And that's where he is lacking. And I'm not saying he will never be there. He might become a very good manager, but, but, He's still very untested. People still won't get give Eddie Howe a big job because they say he's not tested at a big club. If Eddie Howe, who's been managing in the Premier League for the last few years, 500 games in management and with Bournemouth and all that sort of stuff, if he's not ready for a big job, then it seems weird that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is ready for a big job. And... Like I said, he might become a great manager, but one of the problems, I think from looking from the outside of the club was that in the last window or so, two transfer windows, the ball didn't trust Mourinho with the money to let him just unleash. And so after this bad run of form, they're not going to sack, Mar uh, sack uh, Solskjaer before the end of the season or in the summer. So therefore, I worry that the guys upstairs in the suits will trust Solskjaer with the money because he's completely untested with spending lots of money and buying big name players and I think a lot of it has to do with the players like 
we know, like anybody can see, looking at Man United, you look through their team and you go, okay, I can see where the weakness is. It's defence. They've got a good goalkeeper. They've got decent midfielders. They've got very good attackers. They've got Phil Jones and Chris Smalling and people like that and Ashley Young. Like you can, you can clearly see where the errors lie. And I feel like they should have somebody more experienced come in to help with the transfers. So, because I don't think, and again, this is from the outside. So Man United fans, I'd love for you to let me know. And I'm not, I'm not ragging on Man United. This is not me because I'm a Liverpool fan bantering Man United. I find it a truly fascinating case, but I feel like they should get maybe somebody in to help with the transfers that the, the board members will then trust to spend the money wisely. Because it's quite clear what you guys need. And, but I think it's a fascinating case of the board did the right thing by, by hiring Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but also the wrong thing by hiring Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, if you know what I mean. He was on such a good run, you could never fire him, but he's probably not the right man for the job longer term. Maybe in a few years with a bit of experience, etc., etc. But, you know, he is completely untested. And I feel for the guy. He, what you want to see in a manager is somebody, you know... Before everything else, what you want to see in a manager is passion for the club. And he clearly has that. Of course, he, he, he's in love with Manchester United. I think it's that's clear for all to see. And I really hope he succeeds. Like I say, I'm talking from as a football fan and somebody that just loves football. Not as a Liverpool fan or a Man United hater or whatever it is. I'd love to see somebody like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. More young managers doing well at clubs, especially when they've played for them. I think it would be a massive deal. And... But at the moment, it just looks like a shit show. I've just watched them lose 4-0 to Everton. Um, and it was... I think uh, Gary Neville made the point about the fact that in the first half, the Man United players ran four kilometres less than the Everton players, who aren't known for their mobility as such. And the players just need a fucking slap. All of them. All of them need a good slap. They need a reality. It feels like they need a reality check. Sadly, in the modern era, you can't just, you know, sack off a player and stuff like that because there's so much money in the game and there's so many wages and all that sort of stuff. But, oh, talk about hair dry treatment. God, if imagine after the game today, Alex Ferguson in that dressing room. He might actually have murdered somebody. Just at random. One of the players, just make it, make, <laughs> make a point. Show the others that you mean business. I think I, I would really love to know, like all joking aside and banter aside and all this stuff, keep the banter out of the chat. This is not about that sort of thing, taking the piss out of Man United or whatever. I've been there as a Liverpool fan for like 30 years. <laughs> so I, I know how it feels. Um, but let me know what you think needs to be done. Like, are they going to give just, here you go, Ollie, here's 200 million to spend in in the summer enjoy are, are they are they gonna do that when there was lots of talk of them not trusting Mourinho or do they need to hire somebody with a bit more experience maybe in the transfers or you know somebody with that another Man United link that's maybe worked with the board that can be that intermediary not like a transfer committee because I hate that idea but somebody just to maybe give the board some assurances so they, they're going to worry less that the money's going to be wasted. But at the end of the day, it's not like Man United are a team where they've got their 11 best players on the pitch are all pretty even. So you kind of go, where do we upgrade next? It's clear that, that Man United needs centre-backs and a right-back. Like, clear as day. And whatever David De Gea wants, within reason, just fucking pay him. Just pay him because he's one of the world's greatest goalkeepers. And he's, you know, got a gear and a bit left. And losing him on a free is completely disastrous. Unless, of course, he's asking for the world in wages and stuff like that. But I'd love to know your thoughts, without all the joking and taking the piss or whatever and stuff, about Man United, how they go about this. Like, you know, I, for, for instance, I'm, there's some people I've just seen on Twitter saying Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be sacked. He shouldn't be there in the summer. Um, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this whole situation. It's just bizarre that you had to hire him because he was doing so well, but you probably shouldn't have hired him. <laughs> I've not seen that in football football before. It seems, it seems very strange, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Get a chat going.
uh, an adult chat, okay? Like, I'm a Liverpool fan, and I've not taken a piss out of Liverpool, uh, Man United once in this video, okay? Because it's more of a serious, interesting football debate than that. I love football. At the end of the day, I'm a Liverpool fan, but I love football. Football is the best sport in the world. It's fantastic. So let's keep the banter, which people just use for an excuse for being rude, um, at the comments. But let me know, Man United fans, let me know what you think. What would you be your ideal situation? Do you want to keep Solskjaer? Do you want to just give him a load of money in in summer and hope that he can, um, with no experience, but hope he can then go out and spend the money wisely? Do you get somebody with more experience to come in alongside him, help him out in that front? You know, that sort of transfer dude that just helps Ollie. You know, he still has big input. What would you see the ideal solution at Man United? Or do you just want him sacked and get some big name in? I think you've got to give Solskjaer, the, you've got to give him a go. Because you've given big name managers a go. That's not worked. So give some... The reason why Sir Alex Ferguson was so good, because he struggled early on, is that continuity. Just having that manager in place for so long. It worked with Arsene Wenger for most of his um, tenure. And as a team, because, like I said, as much as we hate each other... There's lots of similarities between Liverpool and Man United. And the ideal manager is somebody who can be here for the next 10, 15 years. And Solskjaer is young enough and loves Man United enough that he could be there for the next 10 years. So I think it's worth investing in him. But I think maybe he just needs a little bit of help. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching the Ramble. I'm going to go watch the Liverpool game. It's weird because obviously I need, I am a sort of a Man United fan because I need Man United to beat Man City. But to be honest, I've already made peace with the fact Man City are going to win all their games. So I've kind of already made peace. And at the end of the day, I'm not, you know, I'll be gutted if we don't win the league. But if we're going to not win the league by lo having our highest points total ever and, and losing one game in the season, then fair enough. <laughs> like, you can't ask much more. I can't be disappointed. We got a good pop at the Champions League as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. And, while I'm recording this, the Cardiff-Liverpool game is just about to start. So, knowing my luck, we'll lose to Cardiff and it'll just be done. But then, you know, maybe that's a good thing in a way. Yeah, you never know with a derby, Man United, Man City, because weird things happen. It's like, as they always say, form goes out the window. Um, and maybe, so I don't know so if Solskjaer is the type of personality that can come out and proper hair dry treatment, proper rip into his team. Like, I'm the fucking daddy. That presence. I'm not sure if he's that. He might be that sort of person, but doesn't strike me as such. So he's more of a, come on, lads, let's all have a cuddle and we'll do better next time. But I'm hoping he can just fucking just slap a few people. Um, I just remind Pogba he's supposed to be world class and in, uh, tell Ashley Young that he's leaving in the summer. That sort of thing. Be harsh. Cut out what needs to be cut out of that team and get on with it. Right, there you go, my friends. I'm off to watch... Cardiff beat Liverpool randomly or something horrible like that. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, for those wondering, it's always winter in my cabin, mainly because I can't change the weather outside. But yeah, winter's, winter's coming. What is here? It's win winter's here. Not quite as good a catchphrase. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.